Hello everybody. I think it is going to be a good idea to make a different video for you guys today. Call it a double feature if you will. <laughs> I know that I have said this before, but I'm doing this because I want as many people as possible to become aware of the brutality that Christianity has to offer. Now, what would motivate a mother and a father to kill their own son and critically injure another son of theirs? The answer? An over 2,000 year old fairy tale. Raw story reports. Police in New Hartford said on Tuesday that a mother and father had been charged with killing their son in a New York church. Four other church members were charged with assault and the couple's second son was also found badly beaten. Christopher Leonard, age 17, was reportedly hospitalized with similar injuries. Bruce Leonard, age 65, and Deborah Leonard, age 59, were charged on Tuesday with first-degree manslaughter. Four other parishioners were charged with second-degree assault, 26-year-old Joseph Irwin, 26-year-old David J. Morey, 50-year-old Linda R. Morey, and 33-year-old Sarah L. Virgoso. Police determined that the victims suffered blunt force trauma at Word of Life Church. The church lists Bruce Leonard as one of its original trustees. The Leonard's residence was being investigated as a secondary crime scene. You know, guys, it is clear to me that this fairy tale influenced these people to not have respect for human life. I do not know why these religious idiots decided to do this to these young boys. They probably did something that was outside of the biblical way of life. The sad thing is, is the fact that there are Christians out there who are willing to kill to make sure that this fairy tale is followed right to a T. It literally makes me sick. The same thing can be said for this next story from DeadState.org. Dale and Shannon Hickman don't believe in doctors. Because of this religious conviction set forth by the cult the couple belongs to, Oregon City's followers of Christ Church, the Hickmans let their premature infant die after being born at home rather than seek medical help. As a result of this decision, the couple was convicted of manslaughter in 2011. The child named David Hickman weighed just 3 pounds and 7 ounces at birth. His tragically short life was only nine hours long, according to reports. The Hickmans went to Shannon's mother for help when she began having contractions more than two months prior to her due date. The couple says they didn't notice anything was wrong with the baby until just minutes prior to his death, a claim which an expert on this subject has called a lie. Instead of calling a hospital like most rational people, they prayed over the dying baby and anointed his head with oil. Both halves of the Hickman couple will spend a minimum of six years and three months in prison for their actions, which is light considering the fact that their child lost his life over their idiotic beliefs. And I want to put emphasis on idiotic. The judge in the case, Robert Herndon, called one of the cult's midwives one of the most dangerous people in Oregon. Apparently, this cult is not just in one small congregation in Oregon either. They have outfits operating in Idaho, Oklahoma, and California. The Idaho branch of the cult has suffered a string of easily preventable deaths as well. The same is true of a similar faith healing cult called General Assembly Church of the Firstborn. The Hickman's lawyer said that there was no way to prove that the Hickman's acted knowingly and that they knew their refusal of medical help would result in the baby's death. Yeah, that's bullshit. This cult and their brainwashing has been responsible for 78 child deaths and 10 women, all of whom died in childbirth. A child's life, I think, should be very important, more important than anything else out there. No alleged holy word, alleged holy being, alleged holy fairy tale should be considered because people can clearly see that this religious idiocy is hazardous to one's health. And that is all I have to say about this situation. So feel free to share this video with anyone that might be interested, whether it be on Facebook, Google+, Tumblr, Reddit, Yahoo, or wherever you guys hang out. Till next time, The Quiet Atheist is out. And remember, if you can't be good, be good at it. Most of all, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next video.